Welcome to Sensational Living with Liliana. I hope you've had a great week. I'm going to make an incredible either an appetizer that you can use for um, a party or you can use this as a main meal. This is going to be such an easy dish to do. My sister Alicia arrived from Puerto Vallarta and of course we are all exceptional cooks because we all really by reverse osmosis learned how to have a love for cooking from my mother who was an extraordinary chef. So I've invited her today to uh, share one of her recipes that I absolutely love. And of course, how, it always, how we always uh, invent recipes is when we go to restaurants and we like something, we might take that recipe in regards of the ingredients and then convert it into a keto recipe or into things that are going to be healthier. So we're gonna start today with um, some shrimp you're gonna have want wild caught because we do not want the farm raised because they are fed with pellets that could be uh, contaminated with different uh, pesticides and, and grain fed so we really want wild in regards to our shrimp Trader Joe's has got some great shrimp it's wild it comes from Mexico and you know again all the waters are going to be pretty much the same so I always say anytime we eat any kind of fish we need to do a little bit of chelation. So today in our salad, we were gonna have cilantro, which is a great chelating agent for heavy metals. So whenever I do any kind of fish, either with cilantro or selenium or chlorella, but it just kind of helps to mine. We cannot get away from a toxic environment, unfortunately, whether it's the pesticides, the chemicals that end up leaching, even organic soil. But what we can do is we can be conscious enough to detox on a regular basis and also you use different supplementation that can help bind some of these toxins. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite my sister Alicia to come on. She's awesome, she's two years older than me. How are you? <laughs> good, good, I'm so glad you're here today. So uh, we get a lot of inspiration from each other which is really nice because we all not only share the same blood but we share the same enthusiasm and passion for life um, Alicia has a medical spa in Puerto Vallarta, so it's nice because we can share different not only modalities to treat our patients, but also wonderful recipes to heal them. And so um, one of the things that she has always used in uh, making this recipe is beer instead of water uh, to blanch these um, uh, shrimp and so of course I'm all about gluten-free so I went and found a fabulous gluten-free beer and so it's really pretty awesome you know I got it actually at Ralph's Market but I think Trader Joe's has it as well but this is right it's called uh, Glutini and it's from Belgium and it's a great beer I actually tried it I mean one of the things uh, I never drink beer I when I used to live in Spain it was fun to drink them out on the beach but since I went gluten-free I just don't drink it at all but now every once in a while when I decide I want to have one this is going to be great now just remember all beer regardless whether it's gluten-free or not it's going to have about a four carbohydrate count to a half of a bottle we are going to use this I'm going to do two pounds of shrimp today so I'm going to use two bottles of this I've already got it here cooking as you well know I prepare things in advance so it doesn't take so long during the show but we've used two bottles I've already got it in here you want to get it boiling before you put the shrimp in and so one of the things uh, my sister has always taught me is especially when it comes to um, pretty much anything I mean she lives off of this grapeseed extract and, and she taught me that when I go traveling this is something that I would never uh, I would always take this with me because I can put a few drops in water and it helps actually to uh, can you know not only for contamination for foods that you're eating but also parasites and so so Lisa you've been using this for a really long time haven't you about 20 years but it just makes your food that extra um, inch of um, making your food hygienic uh, people have handled your food all the way till it got to your to your kitchen so it's always a good thing to do and you can use for, for vegetables for meats for shrimp and and shrimp a lot of people have allergy shrimps did a lot of allergy to shrimps I mean and uh, so this is just one little uh, insurance policy right and also to um shrimp is a scavenger food so of course it may have a little bit more contamination because it's a ground feeder so again about 10 to 20 drops maximum mm -hmm. in a big tub of water and you don't need to leave it in for very long you know maybe like two minutes at the maximum mm -hmm. uh, probably with shrimp I probably leave it in about two when it comes to meats maybe you know 
you use three minutes. three minutes for the shrimp? Yeah. Two to three. So, to so anyway, more. you can do all your meats and it's great. I do my vegetables in this as well, but this is a great way to kill critters, especially parasites, which we all have, unfortunately. But we, I was, we were talking about this morning about the biome and how the gut is your second brain and mm -hmm. how important it is to keep your good bacteria and your bad bacteria in check. I like to think of it like an ocean. In an ocean, we've got all kinds of species, right? And when they cohabitate together, it's wonderful. I mean, we don't, we're, we're healthy, we have vitality. But when one of the population, one of the species overpopulates, we call it, you know, for example, a bad bacteria, whether it could be candida, for example, or even parasites or other organisms, then it changes the biome and then we start having a lot of gush, gut issues. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately in our gut, about 85%, wouldn't you say so, Alicia, some of our neurotransmitters Absolutely. are produced in the gut. So we don't have a good gut, we don't, aren't as happy, you can't sleep as well, and uh, of course nobody likes digestive issues. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Alicia hear. Uh, so what, one of the things she was saying earlier to me, because a lot of times I just pop the shrimp in there and, um, so you want to devein the shrimp, so I'm going to go ahead and let her do that. Just as an example. Well, these are two of the, just the samples of, of, of what it looks like. And okay. what we're going to do is we cut them and we devein them and we remove the vein in the back. I've already deveined these, so this is about uh, half of the size of the shrimp. You could make it small if you want. You want it bite size, it will, it will shrink up a bit. But we're going to go ahead and... Um, so these ones had tail on, and so uh, we're going to go ahead and cut them in, in the, down the middle because, again... What I want to do is I want to lay them nicely since we're not going to use any kind of tortillas or tortilla chips. Uh, oftentimes they use that with a uh, seafood salad or ceviche. It's kind of like a ceviche but a little bit different um, because we're going to be putting cucumbers which is going to make it really uh, light and very alkaline. And so again, you just want to go ahead and devein that. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these in. Now honestly, you don't want to leave them in very long. And one of the things my sister shared with me today is that she puts them in there and really pops them in the freezer uh, on, a, on a paper plate. Uh, you want to you know, take any of the excess water off, but she stops the cooking very, very quickly with this. And then when they're nice and cool, then we go ahead and make the salad. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those into the boiling water. So Alicia, I'm gonna let you kind of take care of that there for a second. Now, um, another thing that uh, we are going to do is, you know, normally, like when you, I've made my ceviches before on the show, I chop all the cilantro and the tomatoes, but what she shared with me in this particular recipe is that we're gonna throw everything in the blender, so it's gonna make it even that much easier for you. So honestly, this meal uh, or appetizer, however you choose tonight, we're gonna use it as our main entree, and we've made some other uh, uh, little accoutrements to go along with this. But, um, so, you know, Lisa, what I might actually have you do is let's go ahead and start to make that, um, that cilantro uh, dressing. So it's, it's, it's a dressing, and so I'll go ahead and watch that, and I'll go ahead and let you do that little wonderful cilantro dressing there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take these out now, and so literally, it's just enough to make them, so you wanna go ahead and explain? Okay, this is uh, lime juice. You can use lemon or lime juice. This is about three quarters cup, and uh, some people like their shrimp a little bit uh, raw, a little more raw, but we're kind of par cooking them so they're not too raw. The lemon is just going to marinate them. Um, it can actually <coughs> cook them a little bit more too and, and make them a little more flavorful. We're gonna add some cilantro to this. It's gonna be a green, a green looking dressing. So we got about two cups of cilantro that you're adding to that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna leave a little bit out for garnish, I believe. So let's just put in most of it in there. Okay. So look at all that wonderful dark green chlorophyll. And as I said before, it's a wonderful chelating agent. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna put, this is one whole uh, jalapeno. It, it can be really spicy, so I'm gonna just put half. Okay, let's put half. And then of course you wanna seed the cilantro. And as, as I've said before, you know, when, when you're handling chili, you gotta be really careful because you can get it in your eyes. I mean, how many times have we gotten it in our eyes? And so again, you know, you wanna be a, a little cautious when you are handling chili. About how much salt are you putting in there? I'm gonna put one and a half. One and a half teaspoons of salt, okay. Yeah. So we've got about um, a half a cup of lime. Again, you can interchange this with lemon or lime. Some two 
pretty much packed cups of cilantro and one and a half. Um, oh, yep, go ahead. I'll get, grab the garlic for okay. you. We're going to put uh, one clove of garlic, and you can do with or without however you like it. I like the garlic because if you have a little leftovers for the next day, the garlic will keep um, any kind of, keep it fresh. And what's nice about garlic too, it's a great, uh, you know, I like to look at it as kind of an antibacterial mm -hmm. uh, because it really is great allicin, which is very supportive. How many garlics do you want? Oh, let's just do one. Okay. We so one garlic. More, but we're going to have so much spice with the jalapeno. I think we're going to need it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on and start off. give you a little spoon here and we'll give it a little taste make here. sure it has enough salt there we go <laughs> never a dull moment in the kitchen all right so let's go have a little taste of this so it's kind of a little thick too which is kind of nice mm -hmm. and uh well i think it's pretty good it's pretty lemony there so why don't you put a little there and taste it see what you think since this is your master recipe mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's spicy enough Okay, so a half of a jalapeno did the job. I mean, we're Mexican, so we like a little bit of kick, but even for us, a half a jalapeno was just perfect. And so let's go ahead and add some olive oil to it. What did you say, about a tablespoon? Uh, yeah, or that two? will have coat your stomach also for the um, Actually, the I'm gonna put two because actually what it'll do is it will also mellow out the lemon a little bit mm -hmm. as well. Now remember, we want it lemony because we want to marinate the shrimp, and we just cooked that shrimp for just one minute, and so this will help. We need to juliet the um the oh, I cucumber. Will. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's go ahead and have a taste of that. Now I'm gonna have you taste it too, Visa, because this is your recipe <laughs> and see if you think this is works. Let me taste. I don't think it needs more salt, do you? I think it might need a little teeny bit more salt. Okay. What do you think? A little more salt. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little teeny bit more salt to this. So we started out with one and a half teaspoon. So I'm gonna put another half in there, and of course you're gonna do this to your taste. And actually, once you actually get this onto the shrimp and you let it marinate, because honestly, it's gonna taste better the longer you let it marinate. And I'd say no more than two hours before we eat it. I mean, of course, even if whatever's left over, you can have it overnight, it'll, it'll be beautiful the next day. Um, but about a minimum of 30 minutes, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and blend this up. And then we're gonna julienne those cucumbers. Let me give it a little try here. Okay, Lisa, what do you think? Come have a little taste there. It's your recipe, so we want to make sure it's right. Mm. Perfect? Mm -hmm. I think it's enough salt, yeah. Yep, okay, mm -hmm. we can always add a little bit more salt. Better to add a little bit later than to put too much in, okay? All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do, now normally I never add cucumber to my ceviche so this is kind of nice now one of the things that she shared with me let's go ahead and take the ends off one of the things she shared with me was um that you know once you marinate this it's going to have because the water uh of the cucumber is going to be released especially with the lemon and so uh w once you marinate it whether it's 30 minutes or two hours I would dump the excess liquid out because again, we're gonna, it's, we don't want it to be very watery. I want it to be set onto the nice lettuce leaf so it's very delicate and easy to eat. Whether I put it on top of lettuce itself as a salad and or we serve it as an hors d'oeuvre. So this, I'm gonna go ahead and um, this is just basically an organic cucumber. I like these ones because they don't have so much seeds in them. And honestly, you know, you can leave the um, you can leave the skin on, but again, I have a tendency now, just because you know I am in the research side of the science of food, and unfortunately, oftentimes even organic food because of the heavy pesticides 
in, in regards of normal farming, it's leaking into our soil regardless. And so even if it's organic, and especially that are thin skinned like this, I'm gonna go ahead and peel it. Um, just because, you know, just a little, a, a little added extra measure, all right? So I use my salad master now. You don't have, if you don't have a salad master, perfectly fine. You can just cut them very, very thinly. Because again, we want, we don't want anything chunky. We want it to be very delicate. I'm gonna demonstrate how, how Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use my- um, You cut it with a knife. Okay, we'll go ahead and cut it now. Okay. If you wanna do it hand, just make sure it's about as thin as you possibly can. And of course, I can't live without my salad master here, so I've got this great tool here that's just gonna cut them in a perfect diameter. And so I just ordered a new one today because I wanna give this one to my daughter. You can hear it's a little squeaky, but it works absolutely perfect. At least is that enough, or should we have a little bit more? All the way? Um, yeah, because okay. it's alkaline. And it's okay, really, it's a good fiber, and, and it has water in it, so okay, it's very high perfect. rating. All right, so we've got the cucumber here. Now why don't you go ahead and cut that for me, the, um, the avocado. We'll just cut up some chunks. Now, you want to put the avocado right before you get ready to serve, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, let me give you this, you can use this. And um, here you go. Uh, so if you're gonna marinate for 30 minutes, do not put the avocado in it. You're gonna put it in right before you get ready to serve, whether it's a 30 minutes or it's going to be two hours. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take these shrimp and put, now, of course, remember, this is what I would consider a bitter food in regards to the very, very low sugar. Anything that's not sweet is considered very, very low sugar. So, again, it has a lot of water in it. So what I think I'm going to do is just take a little teeny bit of the salt, and I'm gonna add it to this cucumber just so that we can, um, that can be pick up the salt a little bit better, and I think that we won't have to add so much salt once we get going here. Let's have a taste of that. Good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the shrimp in, all right? You might right. wanna get two, two spoons so all right. can toss them in. Right. So if you can do that uh, avocado, you got that done. I'm sorry, I just need a spoon. Okay. Oh, so now first you need to here. marinate the... Um, can I have that spoon? All right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss this first and then I'm gonna go ahead and add this dressing here. So let's go ahead and I'll put, put the whole thing on. Uh, I would put a good majority of these. Okay, so again, just remember, cooking is all about trial and error. So again, you know, start out with a little, add a, add a little more if you want. So we're gonna put about half of that in there. You wanna do it this way so it's easy. Um, nah, if that's what makes it easy, just no. Okay. Now again, um, we're gonna wanna marinate this. so. We're gonna try it like this. It's gonna be absolutely fabulous anyway, but let's have a, just a little taste of this. I think we're gonna add the whole thing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so good, I love it. All right. <laughs> it's got a zing. Oh, it's wonderful. Definitely. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, I think you are right on that one. I'm gonna use two <laughs> spoons. You can see my sister knows best. The older I got it, she's got a wise woman here. So. Yeah, you're, you have the massage. See, now I'm yeah. looking at it right now. There's a lot of liquid there, but I still have some more left over. Yeah, so yeah. honestly, I can use that for a salad dressing, so don't throw it away, okay? Now, I would never take this liquid and save it for anything because it will already have been contaminated because of the protein, but that that I didn't use, I can easily turn that into a salad dressing, so that's going to be absolutely awesome. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and put the avocado in. This is already cold. Now, you would never put the cucumber in with warm shrimp. The, the, it was already pre-done, so we've got that all nice and chilled. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this avocado in. Okay, it's square. It's okay, so squares. you're just gonna wanna put a basic bite size. So we've just cubed, cubed it up nicely. Okay. Firm avocados is best. Not too, not okay. too mushy because then I'll turn to guacamole and you want it. Go okay, on. so uh, she mentioned that firm avocado was a little bit better. Of course, you want it to be ripe, but not too mushy because we don't want it to be, to really kind of, we want this to be a really pretty dish. We don't want that avocado to. So, so be very gentle now. Okay. Don't so beat I'm up gonna, the avocado. So I'm gonna let you do it since. This is where you don't want to beat up the avocado. You want the chunks to be visible. 
so when someone uh, dips in, well, she's going to serve a salad, so it's not going to be a dip. This can also be used as a dip. That's you, gorgeous. You can make the shrimps even chunk more chopped up, or more bite-sized. This is a meal. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and steal one of these little shrimp and see how it tastes and see if we're... We're good on that, actually. I'll let it, you do the same thing, Lisa. Yeah. Um, this can marinate for a couple of uh, mm -hmm. half hour, thirty minutes, or can be eaten right away. I love it. Go ahead and have a taste. Soup, what you think? Mm. And tell me if you think it needs a little more salt. This Probably is a, would. <laughs> this is a big bite. <laughs> this is really a big Partinas bite. have a big mouth. Okay. <laughs> so we can put a lot in there. How is it? Good. Need mm -hmm. a little more salt. Just right? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, one of the things that I thought was kind of fun, and I'm going to do a recipe with tacos like this, but I had some jicama in my refrigerator, and I thought, you know what, it would be pretty cool to have like little jicama rounds that we could actually, you know, Mexicans are always trying to turn everything into a taco, one thing on top of the other thing, right? So I thought, well, it would be kind of fun. So I've got a mandolin here, so maybe if I can have that there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, sorry. and then I can just take a jicama and I just cut it in half and I peeled it. So again, I can just go ahead and slice this. You want to be careful. This is a mandolin, so it is quite sharp. But just kind of just show you a little bit there. So these are beautiful. I'm going to take that and put that over there, Alicia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I'm going to grab this little thing here. So again, it's kind of fun. Now, if you just do this in advance, like you're preparing for your party, you can put them in water so that they don't turn brown, just like I do with my radishes. So I thought this was kind of a cool way to serve them. And so we can kind of put them on a nice little skewer there and serve them by themselves and just let people know that they can use this also as a, a chip for them. A or a, a little tortilla, exactly. Like I said, you know, we're always trying to turn everything into know, a taco. In, in Mexico, <laughs> at Costco, you can buy them. That's awesome. It was interesting. We had a doctor come and give us a lecture this week and, and you know, we were talking about the contamination of our environment. And so uh, even organic foods are, they're finding the um, Roundup, unfortunately, because it is in the air and in the water, or in the water, and it's contaminated the soil. And so he said that Costco Organics and Trader Joe's Organics really are testing the highest grade. So I thought, how fantastic. They're reasonable price, mm -hmm. so it makes it really, so that's kind of fun there. So I would kind of serve it just like that, just as a side. I've got this beautiful tray of different types of lettuces here. So I've got romaine lettuce and I've got some endive and I just added that little purple endive for some fun in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this over here. Oh, it's heavy, so why don't you, oh, I can do it. I got, I'm strong, that's what I work out for. It's two pounds. Yeah, two, two, pounds, pounds, two pounds plus, because the shrimp was two pounds, so everything else plus, that looks great, okay. And you had some parsley that you were throwing. No, no, it's just, it's just for so, a little garnish. Let's just throw a little teeny bit of this nice cilantro on there for fun. Now look at that. Now this would be really impressive for any dinner party or even, again, tonight this is going to really be our main meal. And I'll just, we're going to serve this kind of appetizer style and just have a lot of fun. We've got a few other little accompaniments that we're going to do as well. So let's go ahead and try this. You know, I always like having crunch, and so I like having a little, I, I just basically took some radishes, and again, the more crunch you have, the more satisfaction you are going to have, because it's going to have a lot of fiber, and when we eat a lot of fiber at foods, it really occupies a lot of space in the GI system, so you're not that hungry, uh, and you can get satisfied very easy with really these high water content foods that can fill you up really nice and, and, they, okay. and they hydrate you And they you hydrate too. you too. All right, so let's go ahead and do a beautiful lettuce sleeve and a nice endive, and let's give a little whirl. So again, you know, you could just put one on there, on each one, you know, let everybody do their own thing. Now, I kind of like these end dyes because they're kind of like a perfect little boat that you can put stuff on like that. And we got the shrimp and a little teeny bit of avocado there. Make sure I got a little chunk of that on there. And you can put more avocado. Make it very avocado yeah. if you want. Yeah, okay. 
So Alicia, I'm gonna give you the first try and I'm gonna try it this way. So did you put two avocados in there? Yes, two of them. Okay, and so of course you can do it just like this. You can just kind of just direct it right on in there or you can just cut it in half there and then just make it like if it was a nice little sandwich. So let me try. Mm -hmm. mm. Good, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, she knows it's good because it's her recipe, but oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Fresh, light, just fantastic. So if I were gonna do this, let's have a look at this. We can make a little taco out of this. This is fun. Mm -hmm. it's really cute. Okay. And you can give, make a hot sauce too on the side if you want to. And honestly, what I was thinking too would be kind of fun is if you wanted to serve this as an appetizer, you can put a little chili salt on it with a little bit of lemon prior to, put a, a little toothpick in there and have them on Served really, really it. nicely. So I love that. Oh, this is great. <laughs> mm. So make a really pretty plate here with your, with your, um, mm, mm, mm. with your floured, um, mm. I love radishes. So mm. that was great, Alicia. Thank you so much. I can't wait for you to share another recipe with me because so many because we have so many exotic mm. foods to work with. We have uh, passion fruits, we call them maracuyas, and we have yaka fruit. All the nutritional profiles are just off the charts when it comes to this exotic uh, tropical fruits because they get all the sunshine they're in the jungle. I mean, it's amazing. So we work with some really beautiful foods, and some farmers in the area are are you know producing arugula and all kinds of great organic yeah, food it's fantastic food in Mexico. so one of the things that i want to remind all of you please share these videos with anyone that you know is really looking to you know upgrade their life their vitality and maybe they want to lose a little bit of weight maybe they've got an inflammation problem but again, we are gonna start a Keto Kickstart Club very soon, sometime in September, mm -hmm. and we will notify you. And so if you are interested or any friends, I want you to join that club because we're going to be giving you all kinds of wonderful tips on how to create a keto lifestyle. And we really wanna help you with any challenges that you might be having right now with weight loss or mm -hmm. as I said, any health condition. We wanna support you in giving you what you need to make the next step in regards to improving your health. Um, I'm really excited to announce also too that I've partnered, my daughter and I have partnered up with Sourced Cuisine. So starting this week, you can actually go online. I'll put a little plug uh, right underneath this video where you can order these fantastic keto scientifically designed meals that are gonna be sourced from their market and within a 48 hour period, they will be cooked with the highest nutrient density and delivered right to your door. So don't miss out on it because it's gonna make life easy for you. All you have to do is want to have the desire to create a keto lifestyle. So thank you once again for tuning in and I hope you have a great weekend and let me know how this turned out for you. Have a great day.